Let's learn how to use random numbers in C Sharp in Visual Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project, file, new project, and I'll choose a C Sharp .NET Framework application. And I'm going to go ahead and call this Random Fun. Make sure you know where you stored it in case you ever have to zip those files up and turn them in. Click OK. It goes out and creates your solution for you with the project and your programs associated with it. By default, that program is called Program CS. You can just leave that if you want. A uh, good program would put comments, their author, the author's name, a description of the program, things like that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and come into Main, where we start writing our code. And we want to work with random numbers. Well, in order to work with random numbers, we have to use a class or a, a file of code that's already been, been written for us. Luckily, that data is automatically brought into our project, so we just need to go create a variable to work with the random numbers. And the way you do it is you specify the word random, some variable name, you can call it whatever you want, equals new random. Now, what random becomes is an object an object. And remember, an object says, I'm code that's already out there, somebody wrote me, and I can do a whole bunch of things. Whether it's your phone, which is an object, and it has an alarm on it, and it has a way to call people, and you can put apps on it. In other words, that object does something for you. Or whether it's a person, or a car, a car you get into, put the key in and turn it, automatically starts. Somebody made that object, and you can use that object. Well, C Sharp has some code already written for you to create random numbers, and it's called the random object. So just like you would declare another number like int inum semicolon, which would create a variable called inum of type int, this creates a variable called rnd of type random. And then when you said int inum equals 10, that would say take the value of 10 and store it to or assign it to the variable. This says go make a new object. That's a key word. That's a reserved word. It's special in C sharp. And it says go make a new object of type random and store it to the variable rnd. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and delete this line out of there for now. This says make a variable called rnd, you could call it anything you want, of type random. Go make that new object, go make your phone, go make your car, go make whatever, and then store it to that variable. Now that that variable has an object in it, of type random, it has functionality already built into it, just like your phone. You didn't have to go program your phone to make it work. You just had to turn it on and start working with it. So in this case, we can start working with that RND because the code's already been written for us. I'm going to go ahead and create two new variables. Int I score 1, int I score 2. And I want to generate random numbers and assign them to each of those variables. So here's how you do it. I score 1 is equal to, because we want to do something and assign it. If I said 10, that would assign the value of 10 to the variable I score. But I want a random number. Remember, the random object is stored where? In the variable called RND. That's a variable. It's an object. So if you press period, it now says, oh, I've got code that already works. What code would you like to work with? How can I help you? And you could say, well, Here's the different things. I could get next, I could get a next byte, a next double. I could do different things where the code is already there. And if we choose next, it allows us to work with integers. And I could say next 50 semicolon. That would now return a value between 0 and 49. So whatever number you put here is going to be one less that it could work with. So it could return a 0, a 20, a 10, a 5, a 49. It's not going to return a 50. If you wanted 50, you'd have to say 51. So that returns a number. I score 2 
equals rnd dot next parentheses 40. That now returns a value between 0 and 39. What if I did this? I'm going to go ahead and create another variable, int i score 3. And for that variable, i score 3, I'm going to say go do a random variable and let's go get the next random value we can get out there out of the computer and I'm going to say 1 comma 13 semicolon. This now says return a value between 1 and 12. 1 and 12 and that's because I said 13 there. Notice it doesn't do anything there. It doesn't start below. This says where do we start? and we end one less. What if I did another one? Int I score 4 and I said I score 4 is equal to rnd dot next 0 comma 10. This would return a value between 0 and 9. And then what you could do is you could say, well, if I score, if I score one is greater than I score two, curly brace, console dot right line, I score one is larger. So the RND is our variable of type random. This makes a new random object that has code already built into it, like a library that we can call and use. We create that object. We assign it to that variable. And then we can start using the next method to pull random numbers out of the computer. If you put 50, that's 0 to 49, 40, 0 to 39, 1 comma 13 is 1 to 12, 0 to 10 is 0 to 9, what it would return. In fact, I could come here and I could display all those numbers too, just by doing a console dot right line, and we'll display I score 1, and then I'm going to copy and paste each of those lines, and then I'm going to change this to be I score 2, I score 3, I score 4. So now I'm going to display all four of those, and then I'll say if one's greater than two, I score one's larger. And then I want to go ahead and pause the screen. Remember we do that by saying console.readline. That'll pause the screen for us. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what happens. So we're executing it. We're seeing random numbers. 14, 1, 3, 5, I score one is larger. So that means 14 was generated for I score 1, 1 was I score 2, and then the other values went in there. What if I ran it one more time? Let's see what numbers show up. 45, 38, 3, and 4. What if I ran it really fast both times? Like I run it once, and I run it again. So far it looks like it's working. What if I did this though? What if I copied this code And I'm going to go ahead, so in other words, I'm going to generate four random numbers. And then I'm going to uh, print them out. I'm going to go ahead and do a backslash n, backslash n, to print off two blank lines. And then I'm going to do it again. And it's going to go really fast. Let's see what happens now. And it looks like it's still trying to generate the random numbers. So that's how you generate random numbers in C Sharp. I'll go ahead and get rid of that extra code that I typed in. You create a variable of type random. Write that statement to make the new random object. Create your other variables to hold the data. Use the random object. You don't say the word random there. You say the variable name. Variable dot next some value. Whatever value is 0 to 1 less. So 49, 0, 39. 1 to 12, 0 
to 9. I print them off, and then I can even do a comparison. And then I pause the line. That's random numbers.